The issue that we have here in Northern California is that we had a lot of not so great ocean things happen. And when I say not so great ocean things, I mean ocean warming. And it wasn't just the warming that made that kelp go away. Urchins moved in and displaced abalone for that food type. So that ultimately caused the ecosystem to shift from a kelp forest into an urchin barren. So when the kelp started to disappear, abalone were negatively impacted by that loss of food. With that change came the loss of all the other critters that really rely on the kelp forest. And so folks like Josh, folks like the Waterman's Alliance, um, were really interested in understanding how they could help. So I got into this because in 2014, I was on the Director of Fish and Wildlife's Recreational Abalone Advisory Committee. I was the North Coast representative. The recreational effort really started as a movement to try to raise money and awareness for the commercial effort. 2018, I finally got them to raise the recreational limit so that I could organize large scale uh, events with recreational divers removing purple urchin. So we'll swim out and uh, drop down. We'll be able to find an area that's pretty highly populated with urchin and we can go down and crush some urchin. I'll show you what we do and then we'll swim around and, and uh, see what we see. We'll see hopefully some healthy ecosystem mixed in with some unhealthy ecosystem and you get a, a good idea for the different views in a very small area. What we're doing now is actually gonna go through and look at what the urchin look like. How hungry are they? How full are they? When you look at the urchin and you see that they have kelp inside of it, that is the mouth that got fed. So that could be um, an abalone that didn't potentially get food. But I think what's really interesting and I think very particular about this circumstance we're in is that these are native species, like these are meant to be here. You know, they're just as meant to be here as any of us. The abalone that were here in Northern California were part of the last remaining recreational abalone fishery in California. So there was no commercial adventure for abalone. It was purely the public wanted to go get some, they could go get some. Um, and so yes, for that commercial use, for restaurant use, farmed abalone became the custom. Uh, we produce Japanese izo abalone. The one of the feature is we produce from the, the egg. So we, we control everything for their life. Uh, the over 95% in uh, the, as a worldwide uh, for abalone, the edible abalone is coming from the farm raised. Now it's almost gone from the wild. So I want to keep uh, the, the culture to have abalone. So I want to be the part of them. Painting for me, there's no way that it couldn't be a meditation. It's not something I've really ever chosen to do. It's just something that I have to do in order to express myself and it calms me down. My name is Danielle Burnside. I'm an artist on Big Island of Hawaii. I first saw abalone when I was working at a retail shop in Michigan. Um, I was right next to the lake, but abalone just transported me into this like magical world. I've been an artist my whole life and I just could see the magic in abalone. And ever since then, it's been one of my favorite just inspirations, really. The magic is in the color, like they all have a different rainbow. There's lighter blues, there's darker blues, and they're just so translucent. 
And it's just amazing, it was alive. You know, like this is a live specimen. It's just so amazing to me that nature, you know, creates this beauty. It's just allowing you to see the breadth of your own soul, honestly.